Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to avoid cakey foundation. I really hope you enjoy this video. I love doing videos where it's all about one specific topic. So make sure you like this video if you want to see more like this and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you do makeup in a way that I'm saying that I wouldn't personally do or I wouldn't recommend, it doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. Everyone is different and I'm not bashing anyone's makeup techniques. These are just what I find have really helped me and in my makeup journey. So if you do want to take on any of my little tips and that'll be great but if you don't agree with them that's totally fine as well. Makeup is totally free of rules and this is just some tips to help you guys so I do hope you find it helpful and if you do want to know some tips and tricks on how to avoid cakey foundation then just keep on watching. So the first step that you want to do is have a really really good skincare routine. Now this is something that I neglected for a really long time. But now that I do I have noticed such an amazing difference in my skin and I noticed that foundation goes on so much smoother. I still have a lot of scarring from my bad skin but a really good skincare routine has really helped as well as having a cleaner and healthier diet has really helped too. But if you guys would like me to do my skincare routine for you guys on my channel then make sure you let me know because I could talk about skincare for ages so definitely let me know. No. The next step is moisturizing really really well and this is even if you don't have particularly dry skin. I personally don't have super dry skin, it does get dry at times, I would say I'm combination, but I use a water based moisturizer in the morning every single time before I do my makeup and I've noticed such a difference when I do this just before I apply my foundation. Not only does the primer just cling on so much better to it, but I just feel like everything just smooths on so much better, especially when all of my little dry skin patches are totally moisturized. So this definitely prevents that cakey looking foundation that clings on to the skin and I definitely recommend moisturizing your under eye area as well because you shouldn't neglect that because otherwise your under eyes can look really like creasy and dry and that's very common especially this time of year so make sure you moisturize that area as well. As you can see so far from these tips prepping is so important and one that I love to do is multi priming. I like to make sure that every single sort of problematic area of my skin is covered so what I like to do for myself is sort out the dryness first. I have moisturized but that does get absorbed by my skin so I like to take something that's a little bit more heavy duty like a thicker moisturizer or a moisturizing primer and apply that all over my skin and then I do like to go in with a pore filling or smoothing primer as well because I feel like this really really helps to make everything just smooth on. Prepping your skin is so important I can't explain. Anytime I've had cakey foundation the majority of the time it's not because I've applied too much it's because I haven't prepped my skin properly and that's something I've definitely learned within this last year is prepping is so important so definitely give all these tips a try if you feel like your foundation just looks cakey no matter what you do. Also another tip is to apply your smoothing primer downwards because this pushed all your baby hairs on your face downwards and that way it doesn't kind of stick up and create little bumps. So this one is a must for me and that is colour correcting. Personally for my skin I have to colour correct my redness which is caused from old acne scarring and I like to use a green concealer on top of this to correct that colour rather than using a thicker concealer over my foundation or underneath my foundation even. This colour basically clashes with the colour that's going wrong on my face and that basically makes it a lot easier for my foundation to do its job without little things peeking through. For any other type of colour correction make sure you are using a different colour. So for example, for dark under eye circles, use peach. For any darkness, use the more orangey tones. Colour correcting is pretty much a whole video in itself, but for now, I think you guys get the idea. So now we're actually moving on to a real foundation step. That's how important prepping is guys, but for now we are moving on to actual foundation. So I'm taking my foundation and ensuring that I'm applying it little by little. I like to dot it around my face because I feel like this is a lot better to kind of like spread everything out without taking too much. And then I'm using a brush today, but you can use whatever you like. You can use your fingers, you can use a sponge, whatever works for you the most. And you want to apply a small amount at first. And then if it's not enough, then build on slowly. That way you won't apply too much too quickly and it's just a lot easier to correct that and that way you won't apply a mass amount of it and then it ends up just looking cakey and we just ruin all the prepping we just done. <laughs> so even though today I used a brush to apply my foundation it's really good to have a damp beauty blender or beauty sponge nearby because this does pick up excess product and I find this really really helpful to take away that product that makes it look cakey. So once I've applied my foundation sometimes if I'm not happy with it and it looks a bit much 
much. I'll go over it with a damp beauty blender and I just find this helps so much to just make everything look a lot more skin-like. That's just picked up extra product that wasn't necessary and I also find a beauty blender or a sponge a lot better for the under eye area as well. I find that the under eye area can get cakey very quickly so I definitely recommend if you find that this area creases and gets very thick looking. I would recommend using a sponge if you haven't already. I do like to use a brush sometimes, but a sponge is just a little bit of a no fail for me. You just can't go wrong with it. So definitely try it if you haven't. So this tip is something that's very obvious for a lot of people, but I personally wasn't doing this and I've noticed such a difference. What I used to do was apply cream products after I had set my foundation and I found that this was making my skin look very, very cakey. When I apply a cream bronzer, a cream highlight, a cream, just a cream anything that isn't powder, I like to apply this before I set anything and that way I personally feel like it ends up looking a lot more flawless. The texture can get a little bit beady and just cakey looking. So once I've done my cream bronzer or contour or whatever I wanted to do that day, then I'll go over with a translucent powder like the one I'm using now and just pat it onto my skin and I find that this just looks so much more flawless and just more skin-like instead of it adding an extra layer on top of our foundation and I just feel like this looks super flawless. Another tip is to pat powder into the skin because I find that this looks really flawless as well. And then finally, the last tip is to spray setting or facial spray like there is no tomorrow. This has changed my foundation game, honestly, especially since I did that video where I dunked my face into water. I've been using a lot more setting sprays and I feel like it's that, but just a little bit less dramatic. And I was never a fan of setting sprays, but now I am. As you can see, I went crazy, but it just makes everything lock in so much nicer. It looks so flawless and it takes away any powderiness. So if you did go a little bit crazy with the powder, this takes that away a lot of the time and it just makes it look more skin-like and a lot less cakey. So guys, that is the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, then don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. Don't forget to let me know down below what videos you want to see next, and I will see you all next time. I love you guys so much. Bye!